Okay, I'm, I'm going to tell you the story of a motivational problem, um, which is also behavioral change, of course, uh, that took the form of a forecasting tournament. Um, IARPA sponsored, IARPA is the Intelligence Advanced Research Project Activity. It's the research wing of the intelligence community. And it sponsored a uh, four-year project uh, to elicit and aggregate intuitive forecasts. Now, we all know that people can't make f predictions very well. Um, yet, despite that, IARPA set up this program to figure out how to devise the best possible ways of eliciting forecasts and then aggregating them from a large dispersed crowd. Um, so, the, in the tournament, there were five university-based teams that competed against each other, and the goal was to come up with, um, as I said, the most accurate way to elicit and aggregate um, predictions about all kinds of geopolitical events. Um, financial and commodity, finance questions, commodities markets, uh, naval strategy, pandemics, electoral, outcomes, you name it, it was out there. So no one could be a, um, an expert in everything. We're, we're, these were uh, very smart lay people who signed up. And the question was, our question was, how do you motivate them? How do you get them to spend, um, well, thousands of people actually, to predict hundreds of events over four years of their lives and keep doing it? So this was quite a, a long period of time. And um, the single best tool that we discovered for doing this was the following. It was to identify and cultivate people that we called super forecasters. Now, super forecasters were the top 2% of thousands of people who'd signed up for, for this tournament. And they're, they're regular people, but they worked incredibly hard. We put them in elite teams and they work together. It's just like the idea of tracking in schools, right? Uh, homogeneity of skill and, um, let's see, and, um, uh, we'll see the extent to which people benefit from that homogeneity. And the answer to that question was phenomenal. Absolutely magnificent things started to happen in this social context when we put these really good people together. Um, what happened? Well, well, first of all, let me say, they were incredibly accurate relative to everyone else. Um, they wanted to win, now they wanted their team to win because it was a co competition co uh, cooperation situation. They cooperated within teams, competed among teams. So here's what they, some, a few of the things they did compared to regular forecasters. They predicted lots more questions. You know, they went from an average of about 45 to about 90 questions when there was roughly 100 per year for them to forecast. They posted, they talked a lot more about specific questions, about general purpose strategies, cognitive triage, and so forth. They, um, they liked to gather new, you know, newspaper articles and op-ed pieces and so forth for their teammates. They talked, they shared news, and they talked about their rationales. They, um, uh, were more willing to ask questions of their teammates. And not only that, they were more likely to reply to their teammates' questions. Um, so how did this all come to be? It was, it was almost like suddenly we put them on steroids. And they went from, say, an average of one and a half forecasts or updates per question the questions, by the way, were open for a period of time, and they could come back in and update any time they wanted. So, you know, these guys are suddenly going from an up two 
updates per question to 10 updates per question. And this is with about 100 questions per year. Why? Well, they are terrified of disappointing each other. They are holding each other accountable in a way that other forecasters were not. They were, whoops, I'm out of time. Okay, so <laughs> you can far be it from me to complain about anything in this conference here, but um, I'll just put in a plug for the power of the social context. And it would be great if we had chat rooms for people to talk about their progress or their lack thereof or their issues and... Um, do you mean us or do you mean the... the well, we could do it too, but <laughs> how about the, the participants in the... Uh, uh, yeah, so I think that um, maybe Generation 2.0 uh, could, could take on some of these things. Okay, thank you. Thank you.